When it comes to the word widow, everyone's first impression is of desolation. In Mongolia, with a population of only 3 million, 300,000 single mothers have demonstrated through practical actions what independence and strength mean. Mongolia has a vast territory and sparse population, with most areas being plateaus and grasslands. The climate is very cold, and heavy snowfall in winter is the norm. In such a harsh natural environment, many Mongolian herders will freeze to death on cold winter nights due to sudden snowstorms, leaving their wives as widows. According to statistics, hundreds of herdsmen die every year due to bad weather. For example, in 1924, a rare blizzard occurred in the Kirin region, causing hundreds of herdsmen's tribes to be buried, resulting in severe herdsmen's deaths and leaving many widows behind. In addition to sudden bad weather, Mongolia's vast territory and sparse population have also led to poor medical conditions, and many herders have died due to untimely treatment of diseases. The sudden death of her husband also made her a widow overnight. According to relevant surveys, the average age at which women in rural areas of Mongolia become widows is about 35 years old, and over 70% of them become widows due to the death of their husband. In traditional Mongolian culture, the marriage concept of prioritizing sons over daughters and polygamy is deeply rooted in people's hearts. Men have a noble status and can have multiple wives. However, women have a low status and often cannot receive the respect and care they deserve. Many Mongolian men go on expeditions, trade, or graze for months or even years, and are unable to take care of their wives while wandering, resulting in a large number of left-behind widows. Since the 20th century, Mongolia has experienced multiple wars. In 1921, a large number of Mongolian men went to Russia to join the Red Army and sacrificed themselves in the Russian Civil War. Afterwards, many Mongolian youth participated in World War II and sacrificed their precious lives on the battlefield. Many of these sacrificed soldiers had already had their own wives and children, and their sacrifices forced their wives to live as widows. In the era of peace, due to the underdeveloped economy of Mongolia, many young and middle-aged Mongolian people also went out to work for a living, unable to return home for a long time. Some men go out to work for several years without any news, and are assumed to have died. Their wives who stay at home can only consider themselves widows. According to statistics, about 15% of Mongolian widows become widows because their husbands disappear after going out to work. The phenomenon of widows in Mongolia has had a profound impact on social structure and culture. A large number of widows choose to independently take on family responsibilities after their husbands pass away, becoming role models for women. They not only have to bear the burden of earning money to support their families, but also take on the responsibility of taking care of the elderly and children. Many widows have won the respect of society for their diligence and bravery. Due to long-term male outings, women need to take on more social responsibilities, which has accelerated the improvement of women's status and the change in gender roles. Currently, the social status of women in Mongolia has significantly improved. Some widows with financial difficulties need economic assistance and spiritual comfort from the government and society, which tests the level of social development and progress. The existence of a large number of widows has also changed people's concept of marriage, no longer treating remarriage as a shame, and many widows choose to be independent and no longer repeat marriage. Mongolia is a vast territory located inland in Asia, with an area of 1.56 million square kilometers, but it is not suitable for large-scale population settlement. Mongolia has been deeply influenced by Tibetan Buddhism in its history and many ordinary people choose to have their children become monks, which undoubtedly restricts population growth. Mongolia has been in a closed and backward environment for a long time, missing historical opportunities such as the Industrial Revolution, and its slow economic development is also one of the reasons for slow population growth. After World War II, Mongolia gained independence from China but the newly emerging country did not complete successful modernization and faced multiple economic difficulties. At the beginning of Mongolia's independence, 
Its population was only 400,000, and it has only grown to around 3 million. Nearly half of the population is concentrated in the capital Ulaanbaatar, indicating a serious imbalance in urban-rural development. With a decrease in birth rate and an increase in life expectancy, Mongolia is facing an aging population, with over 9% of the population aged 65 and above. It is expected to reach one-fifth by 2050, which will place heavy pressure on the social security system. In addition, due to limited educational resources, the overall knowledge and skills of the Mongolian people are relatively low, which also restricts economic and social development. Currently, although Mongolia's literacy rate has reached 98%, the proportion of people receiving higher education is only about 36%. The population distribution of Mongolia is very uneven. In addition to the problem of excessive population concentration towards Ulaanbaatar, there is also an uneven distribution of population in the eastern and western regions. The eastern part is close to Russia, with a relatively sparse population, while the western part is close to China, with a slightly higher population density and significant north-south differences. The northern part is cold, while the southern part is slightly warmer, and the population distribution also shows a pattern of more in the south and less in the north. This is closely related to factors such as climate conditions and employment opportunities. In terms of medical conditions, Ulaanbaatar and the provincial capital cities are relatively complete, while medical resources in the county and rural areas are very scarce, and many patients need to rush to the provincial capital for medical treatment. The lack of beds, doctors, and medical equipment is still prominent, which has led to a certain gap in life expectancy between urban and rural residents. It cannot be ignored that in the population structure of Mongolia, pastoralists account for a large proportion, and this part of the population is highly mobile, but the level of education is usually not high. Mongolia has a vast territory and abundant natural resources, but for a long time, the country's economic development has been unstable and faces many difficulties. To achieve Mongolia's prosperity and strength, it is necessary to have a correct understanding of the development direction. Mongolia needs to transform its development mode, focus on sustainable development, and overly rely on mineral resource extraction, which is an important reason for environmental degradation. We must actively adjust the industrial structure, develop ecological and environmentally friendly industries, advocate the concept of green development, and at the same time, cannot ignore agriculture and animal husbandry. We must support the transformation and upgrading of traditional industries, so as to coordinate the development of the ecological environment and the economy and society. For example, developing ecotourism, utilizing unique grassland scenery to attract tourists, while also protecting the environment. It is also possible to develop the cultivation of characteristic agricultural products, while protecting the grasslands, to reasonably develop some grassland land and promote pollution-free agricultural technologies. Mongolia should adhere to independence and independence, and cannot overly rely on any party. History has proven that blindly following other countries is difficult to achieve success. Mongolia should actively absorb international advanced experience based on its own national conditions, but the development path must be chosen independently. Mongolia should focus on improving people's livelihoods, making development achievements benefit the vast majority of the people, increasing investment in public services such as education and healthcare, promoting employment and entrepreneurship, and increasing people's income levels.